So it sounds like uh, no matter which way you think the US election is going to play out, whether that's a Harris clean sweep, a Trump clean sweep, or something in between that produces some gridlock in, in the American political system, there's a guide or a strategy that you can take inspiration from uh, uh, in terms of your portfolio and your investing strategy. Hi everyone, my name is Angelo. I am the Communications Manager at Saxo Australia and I am joined today by Henry O'Neill, Digital Sales Associate at Saxo Australia. How are you, Henry? Very well today, Angelo. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good uh, to hear. Thank you for asking. Uh, we have just watched the US presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, and it was obviously a pivotal one because the previous debate included a different Democratic candidate, Joe Biden, and that debate set in train his eventual uh, withdrawal from the presidential race. So we were all very keen to hear what the two candidates were going to say today. Uh, did we hear anything beyond the usual bluster and culture warring that we expect in these types of environments that has taken us by surprise from an economics or markets point of view? Absolutely, Angelo. Um, well, as, as every debate is with the US election, very entertaining. They spoke about pretty much everything under the sun, I believe. Uh, but they didn't really dabble too much in the economy. So we only really had about the first five or ten minutes where both candidates sort of spoke about their economic policy and, and reforms. Um, so I think if we look at the, the Harris administration, she really emphasised the point of the economy of opportunity. She looked at the housing crisis that the US is experiencing. She looked at taxing corporations even more and even a high income uh, tax rate to those on 400000 US dollars or more. And then the Trump side, we got the same usual Donald Trump. We heard about the protectionist economy. We heard about the issues with China and exports there, sorry, imports from China. We heard about uh, reducing high tax rates um, and a large amount of government spending, which is expected to be a $5.8 trillion deficit. Um, but overall, we really just heard them double down and emphasize the current rhetoric that they, they usually go to. So really, it was, it was much of the same in the sense of we didn't hear anything uh, way out of expectations from either candidate today? Not that I think so, no. We definitely heard a bunch of other things um, that they, they spoke about. Yes, indeed. But economics and market-wise, I think we really just emphasise the point. Yeah. What have we seen from the markets since the debate? Has there been much of a move? Yeah, so at 11 o'clock Australian time is when the debate airs. So we've seen currency markets, first of all, um, take a bit of a hit. So the US dollar has, been, has experienced a bit of a sell-off. So dollar yen now tracking at a close to 141. Um, and the, the, the euro gaining a little bit of value there too. Uh, on top of that, whilst US equity markets are closed at the moment, so we are waiting for what that open will look like in New York, we can track the futures. So we have seen a sell-off in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. But I think more um, interestingly, the Russell 2000, which measures a lot of the small cap stocks in the US, something that could perform quite well under a Trump administration, the futures for that also saw a bit of a nosedive as well. Uh, when we look at the bond markets, the, the bond price, the value has, has seen a bit of an increase indicates a little bit more interest in bonds, perhaps a bit of a risk-off sentiment. And finally, gold uh, obviously has been performing exceptionally well with a 20% rise year to date. But I think the volatility and the uncertainty in the market has sort of, has sort of helped the price for gold um, increase a bit. Yeah. Right. So looking across the asset classes, uh, we've got uh, bond yields falling. Yep. Uh, we have the US dollar falling a bit. Yes, correct. Um, and futures, particularly for the Russell 2000, for example, have fallen off. Yes. Is the market saying that it thinks that Harris won that debate? Is that, is that sort of the message we should take from the, the market movements? I think so. I think the market has been pricing in a Trump re-election um, for quite a while now. We have seen equity valuations skyrocket. Past couple of months, there has been a little bit of a, a pullback from that. Um, but I, I do think that Harris walked out of that debate on the upper edge. So the market could be pricing in this, this Harris election, the Harris trade perhaps. So it's a little bit of a risk off sentiment, a little bit of uncertainty. So I think that's sort of what's uh, emphasised and pushed these, these valuations we're seeing at the moment. Cool. And so I guess at Saxo we cater for all types of investors and traders, right? There's lots of different ways to play the US election uh, or lots of different ways to invest while the US election is uh, going on. So what should... Uh, Saxo clients of all of all stripes uh, do in response to today's um, events. Absolutely. So at Saxo, we've been covering the U.S. election quite closely. So we've been looking at a few different alternatives that you can use to position your portfolio and possibly trade this kind of this uncertainty that's existing in the market. 
So at, at our first sort of uh, point of call or plan of attack would be to keep calm and carry on. Um, hold your positions. This will be a period of high volatility and uncertainty, particularly in the US equity market. But come November time, that uncertainty may start to peel off a little bit. So that's sort of the first point of call that we look at. Um, second of all, we, you can look at uh, diversifying outside of some more volatile investments. So we call this pulling back a little bit. So maybe looking at some sectors which aren't as prone to volatility. These include industri sorry, utilities or consumer staples. Um, or looking at perhaps US dollar hedging solutions as well. Um, so looking at ETFs that cater for that or FX hedging as well. Uh, the other way to sort of diversify out and play the low volatility game is to look at bonds. Um, as we know that adding bonds to your portfolio does reduce fluctuations um, as they're not as prone to swings. So that could be something to consider as well. And we at Saxo cover the bond market quite well and we've got a lot of research that can help you understand this product better and look at adding it to your portfolio. And then the final, the final uh, method you could take is to play the uh, uncertainty card and look at potential tr potentially trading the, the volatility in the election swings that we're seeing. Um, and I'll probably break this down into three different sort of strategies. The first one is the uncertainty kind of strategy. You're not sure who won the debate. You're not sure what will happen in, on November 5th. You could look at playing a gold trade, perhaps. And we at Saxo think that the uncertainty in the market and the, the volatility has caused gold prices to push up, and there could be a little bit of room for potential growth there. On top of that, both candidates have expressed their interest to, to, to spend a lot. Um, we're looking at Trump's $5.8 trillion budget deficit. I think Harris has about a $1.8 trillion deficit over a 10-year cycle or so. Um, and infrastructure tends to do quite well as government spending into these sort of projects um, happens quite a lot. And it could be something that both candidates uh, look into during their presidential term. Yeah. The second um, one would be, second method would be to look at perhaps playing the game if Donald Trump were to win the White House for a second term um, and looking at the sectors that could perform quite well. So Trump has openly expressed he's planning to help small businesses, help medium-sized businesses um, by reducing corporate tax rates, by protectionism and let it, not letting foreign companies operate in the US. This could help small caps. So we at Saxo are relatively bullish on small caps if a Donald Trump presidency comes around again. Uh, on top of that, we also think that energy, energy as well, so domestic energy, he's not the biggest fan of environmental um, clean energy as such, so energy companies could be definitely something that we would recommend. Um, and I'd also like to talk about European defence stocks as well. Um, Trump has said that if European companies can't match that 2% GDP minimum NATO spend, he will start to withdraw funding and possibly put the US's involvement with NATO on the rocks a little bit. So European defence stocks could be one to benefit from this too. And finally, the Harris trade. Um, if Kamala Harris wins the White House, some stocks to look out for. I think the obvious one is, is, is clean energy. Um, she's expressed in that debate as well. She doubled down on her investment into solar and wind turbines as a potential um, to transition the US away from, uh, from fossil fuels. On top of that, she's expressed the, an interest in the Affordable Care Act as well. So healthcare stocks could perform quite, quite well under her administration. Uh, and finally, without trade disruptions that, the, that Donald Trump would have with China and Taiwan, and the US protectionist policies, technology could perform quite well under the Kamala administration too. So it sounds like uh, no matter which way you think the US election is going to play out, whether that's a Harris clean sweep, a Trump clean sweep, or something in between that produces some gridlock in, in the American political system, there's a guide or a strategy that you can take inspiration from uh, uh, in terms of your portfolio and your investing strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever your investing style is, whether it's quite like a buy and hold and you're not really making regular trades or you're quite active and you're looking to trade swings in the market, uh, this period is definitely open for anyone really. It's if you, we have the resources and the research materials that you can make these sort of guidelines, uh, these ideas to, to adjust your portfolio or you can trade the swings and trade the volatility. Um, it really is open for anyone. At Saxo, we try to cater to every single different type of investor and trader um, and try to provide as much research and as, much, as many resources as we can to help you make the right decisions. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time, Henry. Not a problem, Angelo. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody, for listening in today. And as Henry mentioned, please head to the Saxo Research Hub in the Saxo Trader Go or Saxo Investor platforms for more or head to the Saxo website where all of our expert research is available.